Perfect. Warning, going off limits can be hazardous to your health. Whether you're flying the Goodyear blimp, man, there's some power. Or pulling an all-nighter in New York. Ah, things are running. Those are Saturday New York time, baby. It's accelerated. <laughs> it's excavated. That's what Cal Stadium's made of? It's off limits. This hangar is home base for a member of the aviation elite. They've been airborne cruise ships, vetted war heroes, and sports legends. And if you get up close, nothing inspires wonder like a blimp. Wingfoot Lake, Ohio is home to the spirit of Goodyear blimp. You've probably glimpsed one from a distance. And if you've ever watched a major sporting event, you've seen their work. But today, I'm not just getting up close. I'm actually going to fly one. Taking a blimp for a test drive is like nothing I've ever experienced. Man, there's some power. So is the landing. All right, here we go. Ay, 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 ay. I'm in Wingfoot Lake, Ohio, ready to take the ride of a lifetime. Holy mackerel, look at that thing. <laughs> Spectacular. The spirit of Goodyear. It's about 40 feet shorter than a 747, but equally impressive in its own way. Hello, sir. John. And Ed Ogden, a 35-year Goodyear vet, is going to prep me for my inaugural flight. Man, this does not disappoint. Oh, it is a magnificent machine, isn't it? This is filled with what gas? This is helium. Helium yep. as helium. opposed to hydrogen. Hydrogen. Yeah, the two gases that people are familiar with, the lifting gases, are hydrogen and helium. Because they're lighter than air. Lighter than air. All right. Hydrogen can be manufactured, but it's flammable. Mm. The infamous Hindenburg was full of hydrogen. That's why a small fire turned into an epic disaster that claimed 36 lives. But this bird is 80% non-flammable helium as safe as a birthday balloon, but a lot more complicated. So within the helium blimp, right. there are sub-balloons. That's right. These bags of air. Inside the bag are two airbags called ballonets. The air is actually in there for two reasons. One, it does give us trim. If you have more air in the front, the nose comes down. Mm -hmm. If you have more air in the back, the tail goes down. Mm. But at the same time, it also allows for pressure. Right. We have to keep pressure in the airship bag because there's no frame. Those interior airbags fill up a third of the famous outer skin, but there's still enough room for helium inside to lift the one and a half ton steel gondola. It seats seven, including the pilot, who steers this big balloon using a cable system connected to the rear rudder. So here you can see how light weight everything really is. This is the rudder and it's fabric covered. Basically, this is an acrylic fabric that they've sort of laid out over this internal aluminum framework. The skin of the blimp body itself is Dacron polyester, a super strong and flexible fabric. And that's actually this thin. That material is this thin. That's amazing. The best way to see how all this lightweight engineering pays off is to take the spirit of Goodyear for a test drive. Group effort. It takes a village to roll a blimp out of a hangar. At nearly 200 feet long, the helium in its bag gives the blimp a ground weight of only 100 pounds, which means the ground crew has to make sure it doesn't blow away in the wind. Let's get on board. If we get a shift, it can swing over and knock us over. Okay. Okay, go ahead. All right. The co pilot seat? Okay. Hey. Uh, how you doing? I'm Don. Good, I'm Doc. Doc? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Do I seatbelt in or are we okay? We're good. No seatbelt here. I love that. Uh, Doc, whose real name is Mike Doherty, has been piloting blimps for five years. Perfect. All right, here All right. we go. As soon as the mast is out of the way and we get a good way off, we'll be out of here. Without the mast holding the blimp in place, 
it's up to the ground crew to point us into the wind for takeoff. So you've got to face this into the wind? Yep, it always points into the wind. We don't have wings, so we can't correct for a crosswind like an airplane does. Once Doc gets the all clear from his crew chief, it's time to get this show on the road. Here we go. And we're off. Today, the ground crew has to run with the blimp on takeoff to keep the nose down. After that, it's all helium. Sweet. Goodyear blimp in the air. Man, there's some power. It's amazing how fast we go up, considering the blimp's noisy engines have barely the horsepower of a top-of-the-line Mini Cooper. That is extreme. I did not even know you were on such an angle going up. Well, the blimp uh, really relies on the helium for its lift, so basically we point it in the direction we want it to go and we drive it there. With the engines quieted down, it's a surreal feeling as I'm surveying the landscape below. It's incredibly smooth. I mean, the whole sensation is really one of floating. Yeah, it's a, that's what makes it such a good aerial platform for us, is that it's, it's very stable for the camera systems and things like that. Right. Uh, oh, it's a beautiful sight. It is. Today is a beautiful day to fly. That stability, crucial for today's cameras, made Blimp's ideal aerial scouts over the oceans during World War II. After Pearl Harbor, the Navy ordered up 200 airships to hunt for Nazi U-boats and conduct reconnaissance and search and rescue missions. The blimps had a 100% success rate, and Goodyear built most of them right here in Akron. So can I get a little lesson on how to fly a blimp? Sure, you can do half, and I'll do half. Pass that some. That right, sounds perfectly fair. All right, well, so our major pitch control, like an airplane, would have a yoke or a stick. Yeah. But because all of the controls in this are cables and pulleys, so if we had a stick in here that only moved about 12 or 14 inches, and we're moving barn doors several feet up and down to get a control, You'd be too tired after five or ten minutes to fly. So we use the mechanical advantage of the wheel, mm -hmm. and it allows us to move those barn doors all the time. It's more like piloting a submarine than flying a plane. You just point your nose in the direction you want to go, and eventually you get there. All right, well, since we got the wheel right in between us, uh, go ahead and take that thing. And we're just a touch on the high side. We're about 200 feet too high. We want to be at 1,000 feet, and we're at 1,200. So why don't you roll it forward? This goes forward? Forward, yep. It's just going to take quite a bit. Oh, I see. I move. Oh, I see some. Oh. It'll keep on going. There you go. It what? takes a while for the blimp to even know that you're trying to do something here. Come on, blimp. There Eventually, we go. There it comes. And now I have to pull now back right away. Down. Well, we'll hold on to it for just a second. Okay. And I'm adjusting the trim or the elevators here. Correct. Yeah. Yep. The small thermals we're running over is kind of pushing the nose back and forth, and I'm trying to even that out just a touch. And you've we've come down to a thousand. We leveled feet. off right at a thousand feet. So you're a professional already. <laughs> While my maneuver was steady and slow, Doc has another idea for our landing approach. Do you guys like roller coasters or not so much? Of course. All right, here we go. Ay, 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 ay. Filling the front of the blimp with heavier air causes the nose to drop uh, slightly. Uh, yeah. Woo! Diving down almost 1,000 feet in just under a minute is hair-raising. But nothing compared to the ground crew's job. They've got to catch the lines while we're moving and the propellers are spinning and guide the blimp's nose into the mast. Smooth ride, smooth landing. There we are. When I drive back to the hotel tonight, I'll be going faster and definitely making some tighter turns than this massive craft can handle. But there's no vehicle on Earth that can top the feeling of floating on air.